my fan because it is hot in here. <sighs> no, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> Here's small. Gallows Calibre DC begin trolling ghosty trickster GT. Ah. <laughs> uh... Guess you're not too bad a troll if this is all you do, just laughing and stuff. <laughs> John, why would you laugh at a blind girl? Ah, uh, you have no idea how much you disgust me. You're a total disgrace to the field of ectobiology. If we ever meet. I'm going to cut your throat and listen to you bleed while I smell you die. Gallows Calibrator, GC, Sis Troll and Ghosty Trickster, GT. His smile literally turned upside down. <laughs> you think it's time to change your chum handle? To what though? Gotta be something to never suspect. What was that thing she said you were disgraced to? You have kind of a hard time reading this city elite speak in spite of your awesome hacker cred. <laughs> PM, follow the agent. You have followed the authority regulator into enemy territory. It is a risky move and this dark palace makes you very uncomfortable. But it is imperative you press on and recover that parcel. You have brought along a parking citation. If confronted, you will say you were only here to deliver payment and leave. <laughs> you have no idea where you're going. You were too nervous to ask anyone. You take a turn somewhere and find an especially regal looking red carpet. You wonder where it could possibly lead. I wonder. To the Black Queen. The Black Queen directs you to the office of the Arch Agent. Or Arch Agent. Is that Arch Agent or Arch Agent? Looks like Arch Agent, but I've always pronounced it Arch, don't know why. Arch Agent, he is in charge of most of the tedious paperwork around here. <laughs> Rose, I must leave now. No, so seriously, what were you doing now? So I was talking to someone who you know the trolls? Yeah, one of them messaged me, so I dashed him hers. It for a moment. Oh, I remember that conversation. <sighs> This is the last you will hear from me. Find your sprite. Realize your purpose. To <laughs> the cat laying on it then. You return to a more typical mindset. You suddenly feel empowered to make important decisions on your own without supervision, parental or otherwise. Rose sip martini thoughtfully. Such as this one. Just a tiny sip couldn't hurt. <sighs> Rose. Stay away. Blah. Fourth exile suddenly appear. Mm. A windswept questant suddenly appears. PM command John to put the carved tablet into a Pixis. John put the carved tablet. Uh, yeah. 
You follow the command telling you the command John to put the calf tablet in the Pixis and type John put the calf tablet into the Pixis. <laughs> you successfully do that and he successfully does that too. Everyone is friendly and cooperative. Egg! What the hell was that? It almost sounded like a huge egg appeared in the sky and landed and then someone mysteriously teleported out of it. <laughs> PM, locate the arch agent. <laughs> you find the agent's office, but he is nowhere to be found. You want something on the desk there. PM, grab the box and run. Hmm. <laughs> If you act quickly enough, maybe you could grab the package and get out of here before... Can I help you? <laughs> Mr. Noir tells you that the tick that, that ticket had better be notarized and punched in triplicate and presented with the full boon dollar penalty plus processing fees. Or you're wasting valuable time he could otherwise spend shirking his clerical duties. Ticket? Oh, this thing? Haha, <laughs> look at that, you're holding a ticket. How did that get in your hand? It belongs on the desk with the others. No, you are not here to pay a parking lot ticket. You explained to the front man, a frightening man. I have no idea why they're so frightened. This is Jack Noir we're talking about. Uh, you explained to the frightening man that you were here to pick up that green parcel. Jack makes it clear he would rather stab someone in the death than process the avalanche of paperwork needed to release the confiscated freight. Also, any legit courier would have to pick up forms ready to go. In spite of how he's supposed to be dressed now, he, but he isn't, he ain't nobody's fool. Nobody's princess either, but look at him. <laughs> but perhaps an understanding can be reached. He gives you a hit list. Bring him the crowns, he'll give you the box. Mm. Jack, examine package. Oh, God. The puzzle mistress departs with her mission of double agency. You wonder if she'll actually be so foolish as to attempt to uphold her end of the lopsided bargain. You make a policy of handing out a Reggie sword and a hit list to just about everyone who enters your office. But you never think anyone's actually going to go through with it. You wish you could watch. She's a dead woman. You wonder why she's so desperate to acquire this package. What could be inside? Jack, open it. His <laughs> face Dave, punch some cards. You've leached more than enough grist from John to afford a punch to Zynix, which, for some reason, Jay put in a hallway making it kind of hard to walk through your apartment, but whatever. You also have plenty of grist for messing around with the alchemeter to manufacture some new gear if you want, but you'd like to figure out what the jumper block does first. Jay keeps dropping a weird assortment of objects for you to capture, log, and punch. You've given up trying to identify and rhyme or reason to the thought process behind it. Dave, put a punch card in the shunt. You put the punch blender card in the shunt just for the hell of it and stick it on the jumper pins. <laughs> the alchemist is fitted with the blender upgrade. This upgrade doesn't seem all that useful. Oh, I throw that. <coughs> Oh, looks like all it does is grind up your totems. Yep, definitely that's what it does. <laughs> Dave used to punch Game Bro magazine card. <laughs> the alchemist is upgraded with a huge metal bust of this awesome bro. The device has been reduced to an alley uses a useless heap of shit. Time to yank out all the shunts and start over. Jade, draw the punch design X. Your inscrutable thought process leads you to draw the punch design X on your scribble pad.
L229BXOG. Hmm. The pad recognises the drawing, but there is no design extra around. And even if there was, it would obviously be way too big to capture log. Instead, the ghost image of the design exists captured along with the capture code on the back. Jade, send the code to Dave. <laughs> Dave, here, punch this code L229BXOG and then put it in the jumper shunty thing and see what it does. Okay. Dave, punch code and put in. In the jumper shunty thing. <sighs> so I guess this is just a built in design X, which is sort of cool, I guess, since I won't have to go downstairs and bang the hallway door in the thing and squeeze through every time I want to punch a card. Because, of course, you couldn't have just put it next to the Alchemist in the first place. But then I have to go downstairs anyway to make totems and get crocsite and stuff. So really, who cares? Well, I think this is only one way to consolidate all the gizmo features. Hang on, I'll give you more codes. Jay, draw the holopad. You don't have nearly enough grist to deploy the holopad, whatever it does. But maybe you could get it as a freebie upgrade to the alchemeter. Looks like it worked. You love your scribble pad. Dave, upgrade our chemeter with holopad. The totem pedestal is converted into a holographic projector. It projects an image of the item in the punch code represents. Oh. This seems useful for previewing an item. Uh, a code will, ah, this seems useful for previewing an item a code will produce without spending the grist on it. You test it on a blended card, but it still renders the Alchemeda unusable, at least without further upgrades. Jay, draw the totem leg. You capture the lathe ghost image and apply the upgrade. Now the holopad projects a hologram of the totem that a punch card will create. This appears to turn the alchemeter into a one-shop stopping hub. You just punch a card, stick it in and get your item. Nice. Jay, draw the jumper block. You get the code for the jumper block extension to upgrade the alchemeter with uh, the jumper block extension. Okay, that's kind of a crappy drawing, but it seems to work anyway. Dave, upgrade. This is getting a little abstract, but it appears to economise on space. Now all you have to do is stick a card in the slot to apply an upgrade. Don't have to bother with any shunts anymore. Jade, draw the IntelliBeam laser station. This thing looks kind of complicated. Damn it! Dave, capture log and larger. You grab the enlarger from your dismantled photography lab. Dave, upgrade. You apply the enlarger upgrade. J, draw air conditioner on roof. You ghost capture log the huge air conditioner and give Dave the code to mess around with. Jade, make air conditioner unit. So, so the object you make is now variable, the bigger the more expensive, as one would expect. You make a tiny air conditioner, this was totally not a waste of time. John, find the car. And I think I'm going to leave it here, because I don't know if I can read all that in time, so bye.